Hi, and welcome aboard the Cosmic Space Patrol ship Intrepid. I'm Captain Jim Stanton. You must be the new trainee they told me about. Yes, sir, Captain. Where should I sit? Right there in the co-pilot seat, kid. Wow. What's the mission, Captain? Asteroids, I hope? Maybe, but it's usually not that exciting. It's a quiet beat. No hassles. Nothing like the pirate lanes on the titanium freighter circuit. Oh, every once in a while, we might run across a pleasure cruiser or a beat-up old communications satellite that's drifted off course, but that's just about it. Golly, I thought it would be more exciting than that. It has its moments. Now, don't get me wrong. I like my job. Most of the guys I went to school with are punching out silicone chips. They're selling robots door to door. <laughs> Not me. I've got this baby. And when I'm out on patrol, she's all mine. Forward thrusters accelerate from zip to half the speed of light in under 10 seconds. I've got enough photon torpedoes on board to turn Saturn into a hunk of Swiss cheese. Not to mention the shields, flip control, and hyperspace. This baby is loaded. Strictly state of the art. How about a demonstration? I'd like to see the ship in action. Okay. Let me show you what she can do. Seatbelt fasten? Yes, sir. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Not bad, huh? Hey, what's the matter? You look a little green. Don't worry. You'll get used to it. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the patrol? Five weeks, sir. Just five weeks? And they've already got you out on a patrol mission? The brass isn't wasting any time with you rookies, are they? Where are you from? I'm from the planet Earth, Captain. Well, I'll be darned. An Earthling. I've got a sister-in-law on Earth. Maybe you know her. her. Name's Zora237. She lives in Pan-Asia. I'm afraid I haven't met her. It's a big place, you know. Yeah, I guess so. So, tell me, what's new back on old Terra Firma? I saw on the commsat where that last climate control dusting the Euro Republic tried really backfired. <laughs> they were picking icicles out of the coconut trees. <laughs> that must have been a sight. How about those biogenetic farms? Those doctors are really doing some amazing things. I saw data on that new breed of insect they created that mines anthracite and reconstitutes it into pseudo-crystal as hard as diamond. Well, it's quite a place, Old Earth, but you know what they say. It's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> you know how it is with us space babies. Once you're born out here, you kind of get used to the zero G's and the wide open spaces. After one week on Earth, I'm as nervous as a protolian android in a jumpsuit. I hear they cleaned up the place a lot after the industrial techno freeze, and well, with the Afro Lab program, most of the endangered species are safe from extinction, but I still think I'd opt for the galactic settlements. I like it out here. Man, would you listen to that? The visual particle counter is going crazy. But I don't see anything out there. Neither do I. Maybe we'd better take a closer look. Hold on, kid. Here we go. At 72,000 miles per second, it shouldn't take long to find out what's going on out there. Red alert, red alert. Asteroid at 3.9 AX vector. Mass too large for spec scanner. Range, 31,000 miles off port wing and closing. Prepare photon torpedoes. Red alert, red alert. Well, kid, looks like you're gonna see some real action on your first time out. Tracking readouts indicate this asteroid's headed on a course that will take it right through the Gamma Hydro Farm settlements in Quad 42. We'd better blast it to Kingdom Come right now before it causes any real trouble. We should have visual sighting in just a few seconds. My God! Look at the size of that thing! It's colossal, and it's headed right at us. Shields up! Confirmed, Captain. Shields are up. Rapid fire torpedoes locked on target? Confirmed. Photon torpedoes locked on target. Fire when ready. Hold on, kid. Here we go. Fire torpedo one. Fire one. Look at that! We hardly made a dent in it. Fire two. Fire two. That was a dead hit. But instead of vaporizing, it's breaking up into smaller pieces. Look at that! There must be thousands of them. 
4,683 to be precise, Commander. Suggest evasive maneuver to hyperspace. I've been keeping the shield on two-second on-off cycle, but they can't hold up forever. One millisecond too long, and the entire ship will explode. Okay, let's go for it. Hyperspace is risky, but it doesn't look like we have much of a choice. Switching to hyperspace in ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, hyperspace. Well, kid, we got out of there just in time. Another few seconds and one of those asteroids would have smashed our ship to pieces. Let's check the computer navigational system and find out where we are. Navigation report. Rapid scan of all memory banks show our coordinates do not correspond with any portion of the known universe. Further analysis underway. No portion of the known universe? What in blazes are you talking about? There must be some mistake. My error factor is 1 in 19 trillion. There is no mistake. Override update. I have found our position, Captain. I knew there had to be a mistake. No mistake, Captain. I used the chronological time scanner to locate our position. We are in the solar system of the planet Earth. But there is a slight problem. What's that? The ship must have encountered a time-space warp while we were in hyperspace. Astronomical calculations indicate we emerged from the time warp 607 years in the past. The year is 1983. into the red. Check those readouts, looks like trouble ahead. Something of incredible size, then I saw it with my own eyes. The computer alarm began to shout, it's dripping closer, look out, look out, look out.
While on a routine mission, the cosmic space patrol ship Intrepid has encountered a strange time warp, which has plunged the ship 600 years into the past. The year is 1983. Well, there it is, kid. Your home planet. Wow, I never thought I'd get to see Earth 600 years before I was born. I'm afraid I'm not much of a history student. Let's ask old Chip Brain what he can tell us about Earth in 1983. I do not compute the name Chip Brain. I am the multilingual LEX 12000. Touchy today, aren't we? I was just joking. What can you tell me and my friend here about the planet down below? 1983 is a little bit before my time. I have already tabulated the information you request. Here is my status report on the planet Earth in 1983. This temperate and largely aquatic planet is inhabited by a wide variety of plant and animal life. The dominant life form is man. There are currently 4,551,000,000 humans on Earth. They live in the 166 countries and 49 colonies and territories on the planet. There is no central government as we now know it. Life on the planet is still largely primitive, although progress is being made at a steady rate. There are currently several dozen wars and conflicts underway. Most are territorial, although some are based on religious differences. Mankind is a stubborn species, and change comes slowly to this world. There are thousands of differing and equally valid cultures now functioning. Some have remained unchanged over the centuries, while others are changing even as we speak. 
I have assembled a collection of audio tapes that may give you a better picture of the varieties of human experience as they existed, correction, as they exist in 1983. So that's Earth in the 1980s. What a place. I think I'm glad I was born a little later in time. You know, it, it might be fun to go down and take a first-hand look at the planet, but I'm afraid it might cause a panic. They're bound to think we're a UFO and start shooting at us. Even if we could talk to them, they would never believe our explanation of how we got here. Besides, we had better start thinking about how we're going to get back to our own time. The ship has enough fuel for only three days. After that, it could start to get a little chilly up here. Captain Stanton, I have applied all my logic circuits to our problem, as well as a complete interface between my navigational and astronomical banks. The readouts today are somewhat less than encouraging. The random factor of the phenomena that created the time-space warp make any duplication of the event extremely unlikely. Excuse me, Captain. There is some new information coming in. The particle counter has picked up something in deep space. An asteroid of truly gigantic proportions. Its flight path will carry it on a course dangerously close to Earth. Any object this size would cause immense disturbances on the planet's surface, resulting in earthquakes, global flooding, and catastrophic loss of life. It would, in fact, create a doomsday situation. Can we destroy it ourselves before it strikes Earth? It is conceivable, Captain. However, it would require a direct hit. Anything less than a perfect shot would shatter the asteroid into thousands of huge chunks that would rain down on the planet. The results would be less dramatic, but equally fatal. How much time do we have? When is the asteroid due in this solar system? Computing. The asteroid will reach the outer perimeters of the solar system in 6 days, 17 hours, and 42 minutes. But by then, it will be too late. The demolition of an object of this size within the solar system could cause a shift in the orbits of one or more of the planets. Not a desirable situation, Captain. Our best chance for success is for us to engage the asteroid in deep space. And what are our chances for success? Computing. Logic dictates that our success is a historical inevitability. We know by the fact that Earth exists in our time that we will be successful in saving the planet. The question is not, can Earth survive, but rather, can we? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go for it! I'm punching in the coordinates that will put us on an intercept course. We should be within firing range in a few minutes. Stand by for ignition. Ready? Fire main thrusters! Now! Look! There it is up ahead! Look at the size of that thing! It's enormous! Captain, off the starboard wing, a shower of smaller asteroids. I see them. Photon torpedoes ready? Torpedoes ready. Steady. Steady. Fire! Got one! Stand by torpedo two. Steady. Let her rip! Shot, Captain. You cleared a path for the ship right through the middle of the asteroids. Main target, dead ahead. Now to find the point of greatest stress. I've only got one chance at the big one. Using my mass spectrometer, I have determined what seems to be the most likely spot to place a direct hit if you hope to vaporize asteroid. It will have to be fired at extremely close range. As close as 3,000 miles. That will give us less than one half a second to escape. It looks as if we're going to have to use hyperspace again. Heaven only knows where we might end up this time. Red alert! Red alert! UFO dead ahead and firing. Shields up! Shields up, Captain. Photon torpedoes engaged. 
Fire when ready. The UFO is closing fast. Look out, he's shooting again! That was too close for comfort. Okay, overgrown pipe plate, we're shooting back now! Gotcha! That'll teach you to fool around with the cosmic space patrol. Now, where's that asteroid? Sighted at 60 degrees port. We will be in optimal firing range in 11 seconds. I want a full barrage of photon torpedoes locked on target. Confirm, Captain. Countdown underway. 9, 8, 7, 6. Hyperspace mode on emergency standby. Good luck, Captain. 3, 2, 1, 0. Fire! Hyperspace! Now! This is Cosmic Space Patrol Headquarters calling the Intrepid. Over. Do you read me? Over. Come in, Jim. Please respond. Over. And this is Jim Stanton, Captain of the Intrepid, reading you loud and clear. What's up, pal? Over. Jim, where the devil have you been? We've been trying to raise you on Spacecom. We're starting to get worried. Over. No reason to worry, Chief. Everything is just fine now. But the last few hours have been a little hairy. Last few hours? What in blazes are you talking about? You blasted off from base at 1300. That was only 45 minutes ago. Headquarters is right, Captain. Check the shipboard clock. Our second hyperspace escape thrust us ahead in time, but not quite far enough. We're still slightly in the past. You can say that again. If you insist, Captain. Our second hyperspace escape thrust us ahead in time. Hey, we heard you the first time, Chip Brain. I was only following orders, Captain. I distinctly heard you tell me to say it again. Forget it, friend. Besides, we've still got a full night's work ahead of us. We've got to find and vaporize that first asteroid without slipping into the time warp again. That's one mistake I don't want to repeat. Well, what are we waiting for, Captain? Let's go get them! We'll blast them out of the universe. We'll photon them all the way to... <laughs> hey, slow down, old buddy, before you pop a chip. You know, sometimes you seem almost human. Oh, no. What a dreadful thought. My logic circuits are far too advanced for that. You must be thinking of my uncle, the LEX-950. Computer. Yes, Captain? Let's go to work. And so Captain Stanton fired the main thrusters. And the mighty ship roared off through space in a never-ending battle for planetary safety. It's tough work, but then that's your job when you're a member of the Cosmic Space Patrol.